Hello and welcome. Today we are driving a 2019 Cadillac Escalade Platinum. Let's take a look outside. All right, so this is powered by a 6.2 liter V8, producing 420 horsepower along with 460 pound-feet of torque. This is mated with a 10-speed automatic, the one that GM and Ford co-created a 10-speed auto, the same that is in the Mustang automatic and many other vehicles, including the Camaro automatic, to name another. So this stickered around $90,000 when new. This has a peanut butter and gloss black type of interior. It is very well upholstered. Make sure to go check out my previous video on this, a POV review of this Escalade. Alrighty, let's go for a ride. It is currently almost night and it is currently snowing, so hopefully that adds some magic to this video. Alright, one early and one of my few gripes with this car, look at this backup camera. This resolution in a 2019 almost $90,000 vehicle? That is ridiculous. That is probably only like 480p. I don't know why Cadillac chose to do that. But, uh, all right. Visibility is pretty good outside of this because it is a truck-based SUV, one of the last. It shares the same platform almost exactly with the GMC Yukon, Chevy Tahoe, and Chevy Silverado. So let's pop this into sport mode right here, and we will do a nice little pull. So long as traffic allows. All righty. 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque, let's see. All right, not bad, not bad. I think the zero to 60 time officially is about 6.6 .6 seconds. And uh, I couldn't push you all the way because the roads are a bit slick. The first thing I noticed about this car, it does ride very quiet, but honestly, I expected it to be a tiny bit quieter. A little bit of tire noise does intrude and that's definitely due to it having 20 inch wheels which are typically the main cause of that so the infotainment system here it is powered by cadillac's cue or q system it has a lot of these touch uh capacitive controls which they do give you a nice little tactile buzz whenever you use them but they're kind of like sliders and not necessarily buttons so those can be a bit finicky to use day to day but driving this car, it's very confidence inspiring. It really doesn't drive as large as it is. This is a three row SUV seating for seven and really a, just a huge behemoth of a vehicle weighing over, I think 7,000 pounds to drive down the road, but it does not drive that way. It has a HUD head up display as you can likely see in front of me. And that's adjustable with a hard button, which is great versus some competitors when you have to go into the infotainment system and it's just a nightmare to find certain controls. So some of the steering wheel controls are just a weird joystick and they're just kind of tough. They take a couple more steps sometimes than you need to to access relatively simple commands. Let's actually flip around up here and we'll do another slight pull. So the brakes in this are very, very good brakes. They are actually Brembo brakes. So you cannot go wrong with Brembo. They are massive. The turning radius obviously is not great, but it really isn't as bad as I expected it to be for a gigantic three-row SUV. All right, still in sport mode, okay. And right after these cars, I will come to almost a stop. I will, okay. And let's see. All right, yeah, the engine sounds great, of course. It's a uh, 6.2 liter V8, big American power. Of course, it's gonna sound great. The startup, the idle on this actually sounds very good as well. It's a stock tailpipe, everything stock, the exhaust system, but it has a very nice deep burble as you're driving it. So this does have a magnetic ride control suspension. It does not have an air suspension, unfortunately. That's one of the limits of having a body on frame truck based SUV. Usually it just doesn't work out well, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It uh, stays moderately flat in corners. Uh, there is body roll. It's a giant truck of a SUV, but it is uh, it is pretty easy to deal with on a day to day basis. It doesn't really knock out too many bumps as I was hoping for it to. It, you definitely feel almost every bump 
it, it definitely softens the severity of any any uh bumps in there but it's a little bit underwhelming and as you can hear it certainly rattles a lot when it goes over those the tires are very loud going through bumps currently as you can see this little green car icon and up on the head-up display i am in eco mode so that actually has a cylinder deactivation mode currently active right now so it is running on only four cylinders out of the total of eight and let's test those brakes yep those brembos are awesome I'm not sure if they're four or six piston, but they, they truly could be six piston. They feel great. Not too grabby though. This, uh, this is my first time driving this vehicle and right away I was very, very much able to drive it comfortably. It also has adjustable power pedals, which is a very nice touch and uh, power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, which is more common, but still a very nice touch to include. Let's take this down some smaller roads. It does have blind spot monitoring, of course. So it's actually remaining in eco mode through all that, through that acceleration. This 10 speed definitely helps out with power delivery. Look at it, I'm, I'm basically below 2000 RPM and my, my resting is actually, look at that, 1100 RPM. That's many cars idle, but I'm driving at 38 miles an hour at that. That's a great feat to that transmission's great engineers. Yeah, the speed limit is actually displayed in the uh, head up display. I'm not sure how they integrate that, whether they do that through like Google Maps or through another system, but it's been accurate thus far. The gas pedal on this, even in sport mode, it really isn't that touchy. This uh, it, this transmission, however it's tuned, of course this is a three row family luxury SUV. It is not tuned to be exciting, but uh, it's manageable. It just likes to keep the RPM down. Earlier in that hard acceleration, I basically had to go to the floor to get it to kick up above say 5,500 RPM. The side mirrors, while welcome that they're so large for uh, driving it, they're actually almost impeding the view. They almost impact your frontward view. They almost create a blind spot of their own, but uh, they, of course, they, they do more uh, benefit than harm. So the audio system in this is actually really, really good. It's a Bose audio system, so it does have a lot of, uh, lot of kick, a lot of really minimal distortion. It knocks out distortion greatly. I do not want to be driving this too much in the snow. So I am going to wrap up this POV review video, but thank you for watching Radial Reviews and be sure to check out my previous video of the review of this car. Thank you for watching and take care.